My name's Chris, and I repair my own audio equipment, and I also show you how to repair yours. So let's get started. What's the problem I had with my Marantz 2500? The reason why so many transformers go bad in the 25 and the 2600? Was I just lucky because I caught it in time? Let me tell you and show you what happened to my known operating Marantz 2500. Take a look at this inrush current 10 ohm 25 watt resistor. It cracked. And if you take a look up in the top right of the picture, you can see where it started to kind of um, burn up. Now, interesting enough, it still measures 10 ohms, but obviously there was some damage there. And so when I heard the fan running on high, I brilliantly went ahead and I touched that resistor. Holy smokes. I might as well put my finger on a hot electric stove or on a cigarette lighter in your car. So I made a note to myself, uh, making sure that I don't touch power resistors with my fingers anymore. Well, now it's time to try to figure out what the heck happened. After I brought it off the shelf, I powered it up. And after just two, three minutes, she's dead in the water. No display lights, nothing. The only thing I've got is a fan that runs on high. I do have one clue. As I said, I powered it up and I it was only powered up two or three minutes. So I was sitting right in front of it. I was tuning in an FM station or whatever. So I was staring at it when all of a sudden the fan went on high. And also, out of the corner of my eye, I saw the right channel peak LED come on. Just for a split second. Came on, I saw it, and it was gone. And the unit was gone. Now with the top and the bottom cover off, I can think about what, how am I going to approach this issue. And it's, I've, as I've gone over in my videos over the years, I try to narrow it down. And that's what you guys should do, too, with any issues you've got with your equipment, whether it's a 2500 or some other piece of equipment. You've got to narrow down where you think the problem is. Once you can isolate it to a spot, it's so much easier to fix. Because you look at this top-down view on this 2500, and if you don't do that, where would you start? Nobody would know where to start. So it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're experienced or not, you've got to narrow down the issue so you've got a good chance of fixing it. So my hint was seeing that right channel peak indicator come on just before it died. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the right channel's power amplifier first. I pulled off the wiring from the P800 power amp assembly for the right channel, which sits on the right-hand side of the chassis. And I tried to power it up again. And what do you know? It powered up just fine. Now, of course, you didn't have any right channel, but that narrowed it down for me that there's something going on with the right side, the right channel on the 2500. So what I did while I had the leads loose I went ahead and measured the voltages and just see were the voltages correct, and they were. So there's something going on with the power amplifier assembly for the right channel, or more, more likely, it's probably something to do with the power transistors. Now to figure out what's going on with the right channel, I'm going to have to pull out the tunnel assembly in the 2500. And it contains the power transistors for both the left and the right channel, as well as the power amp boards for both the left and the right channel. But there's really no way to work on it to see what's going on without removing it. So that's the next step. And it goes without saying, before you start to unplug all this stuff, take pictures. Pictures, take videos. Do whatever works for you. Write it down on pieces of paper. You do not want to start taking this unit apart and then not know how to put it back together. After removing several cables, along with several screws, 
The entire assembly will come right out of the chassis. It's really not too bad to get out. This shot shows the view of the power transistors inside the tunnel. And you can see each power transistor has its own individual heat sink. But there's really not much to them. And it needed something else to move the heat to be able to dissipate the heat because if that's all you had in a 250 watt receiver, you'd be in trouble uh, pretty quick. So that's why they have a fan in this unit. And this is a two speed fan. Under normal operating conditions, it runs on low and you can barely hear it. You have to get right up to the unit to be able to hear it. When it kicks on to high, it really is quite audible. But if you had it where it was kicking on to high, your music would be so loud, you wouldn't hear it anyways. Here's a clip when I was bench testing my other Marantz 2500. And this will give you an indication of how loud the fan is when it does kick on high. As big as this one. Now, did you hear that? I don't know if you could hear that, but the fan kicked on. And it's much louder. I mean, it's it's... You probably can hear it. I hope you can hear it. But because normally you don't hardly hear it at all when it's on low. But now we've got it running hard enough. And hard enough in this case to get that fan to come on high. It took about 10 minutes at a little over 50 watts continuous with both channels driven for this fan to come on high like it did. And that is not what normally is going to happen when you're playing music. You don't have an amplifier just pegged at one wattage. You guys with power meters know that. They bounce up and down and that little bit of time when they're cycling lower power, higher power makes a huge difference in how much heat that these units dissipate. So it's very unlikely that you'll ever get this unit under normal conditions for that fan ever to come on high. Now with the tunnel assembly out of the chassis, I'm able to look it over much easier than when it was in the chassis, obviously. When it's in the chassis, you can't see much of anything. And the first thing that I noticed was there's an NEC power transistor looking in the tunnel, which was not a original part. All of the original power transistors for this unit had a Marant stamp on them. So when I tipped it up and I saw NEC, I know somebody's been here before and it hasn't been me. When I purchased this 2500, I knew it wouldn't power up. Well, it would power up, but all you had is the fan running. Nothing else would work. So I went ahead and I repaired all the issues that got the unit going, but I never rebuilt it. Not like my first 2500. I've got another 2500 that I completely rebuilt. But this one, I just got it going, put it on the shelf, figured I'd get back to it. I never got back to it until now. So here are the issues I originally found with this 2500 when I first purchased it. An open inrush current resistor, wiring errors on the amp assembly, incorrect Zener diodes in the power supply, a totally broken shaft on the oscilloscope level control, a partially broken shaft on the selector switch, a broken dial lamp housing, and a burned out stereo lamp. Now it's time for me to take the tunnel assembly apart. There's just a few screws. It's pretty obvious how it comes apart. There's like six screws for each of the uh, P700 uh, power amp assemblies on each side. And you just take a few screws out and it'll come right apart for you. And then I can take a look at both the P700 assemblies and also see what's going on inside the, uh, the tunnel there with the power transistors. Taking a look at these P700 power amp assemblies on the test bench, it's obvious uh, someone's been here before. Just a few more screws here and then this tunnel assembly will come right apart and I'll get my first real good look at the power trans transistors that are in these tunnels. I could kind of see them before but now I can really see them. And one side, the one at the left is the left channel, and the one at the right is the right channel. 
And I can see there's quite a mixture here of NECs and the original Marances in both channels. This 2500 is, what, 45 years old? Um, you know, it's hard to say when you look at this, you know, when you look at any piece of equipment, how many times has it been worked on? Once, twice? Was it five years ago? Was it 25 years ago? It's hard to say, but without a doubt, it's been worked on. And not all the work looks all that great, but the wonderful thing about this equipment is usually there's always a way to repair them. One way or another, you can keep them going. Now with the tunnel assembly completely disassembled, now I can take a good look at everything and hopefully find out what's going on here that's uh, preventing this unit from starting up. I suspected one or more power transistors to probably be the problem, and that did end up being the case. I've got one bad uh, transistor, and it happened to be one of those NECs not the original Marantz transistor that was bad. So I'm using my transistor tester, but you can also test these out with a multimeter. I got that bad NEC power transistor out of the uh, tunnel assembly. Then what I'll do here is clean off the old thermal compound off the heat sink with some alcohol, put some new on along with a new insulator, and I'm replacing the NEC with a non-semi uh, 1193G. That should get this 2500 going. Ideally, you don't want to have all this mixture of different power transistors. But for right now, that'll do the job. I put the tunnel assembly back together. Give it one more look. Make sure it all looks all right. It's going to need more work in the future, that's for sure. But for right now... I'm going to put it back in the chassis and uh, see if we fix the problem. She powered up just fine. No issues whatsoever. I left it on the test bench for, oh, I don't know, three, four hours, something like that. And it was fine. Um, you know, this is the life of vintage audio, though. A lot of you guys know that. You've got something that's this old, 45, 50 years old electronics. Uh, you never know. The next time you pull it off the shelf you may have an issue. One final thing I want to bring up, because I had this issue with a shorted output, is it made me think about the transformer issues that the Marantz 2500 and 2600 have. There's been enough of them that have failed to make pretty sure, make, make people think that there actually is an issue with them failing. Because normally transformers and vintage audio equipment, there's very little problem with them. And there's been enough problems in the 25 and 2600 to make people think, and rightfully so, there's some kind of issue with them. But after having this problem with my 2500, having a shorted output, I don't understand really why I didn't blow the main fuse. Something was taking that current. It was a dead short. And I would think it would be the secondary of the power transformer. I mean, what was going to happen? My, in, my inrush resistor was hot enough to burn me. Eventually, I, I don't know, would it have burned open? Would it have caught on fire? I don't know. But in the meantime, it had to put a lot of strain on the transformer. So my thought is or I wonder, actually, is, is it not the transformer being weak in some manner, but is it the protection circuitry within the Marantz 25 and 2600 that is allowing the transformers to burn up? Because really with a shorted output, it had to put a lot, some, somewhere, someplace, was drawing an awful lot of current. And it just makes me wonder about the transformer issue and if my issue here isn't really the root cause of it. You have an output go, you don't normally blow up your transformer. You blow the fuse, you know, usually you blow the main fuse, the one that's in the back of your receiver, that blows and you fix it and you're off to go. My receiver was perfectly happy uh, well, it wasn't happy, but it would run. The fan was running on high. 
I mean, the thing was drawing a ton of current because about had to go to the hospital with my burnt finger. Not really, but, you know, it, it was still drawing a lot of current. So, I, I, as I said, it just makes me wonder if it's not the transformer's fault that it was a design issue with it. But as, as I've said many times, I'm not smart enough to figure that out. I'm just glad this output shorted, you know, in the first two or three minutes while I was sitting right in front of the unit. A lot of times I'll turn on these units and walk out of the room, go away somewhere, come back. You know, I, I really don't concern myself with them. Uh, as far as, you know, starting a fire or having something catastrophic happened to the unit itself. But I don't know what would have happened if I wasn't here to see that. If anybody else has got any thoughts about this, please put them down in the comments. And I would appreciate a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I'd really appreciate it for you guys out there who haven't subscribed, just subscribe. And as I always say, thank you so much to my present subscribers. Y'all have a good day.